So what's the toughest iPhone XR or XS case out there? Between the Spec Presidio Ultra, the Pelican Shield, the Tech 21 Evo Max, the Pelican Voyager, the Autobox Defender, the Defender Pro, the Griffin Survivor Extreme, the Gear 4 Platoon, the Autobox Pursuit, Catalyst Impact Protection, the Moshi Talos, the Mouse Limitless, and the Hit Case Pro. Between all those cases, the toughest one is still going to be the Griffin Survivor Extreme. And the toughest iPhone case that doesn't have a belt holster is going to be one of these mouse cases cases or a hit case pro at mobile reviews a eh? monty and i base all our reviews on actual usage actual usage that spans actually years we've been reviewing cases for such a long time that we kind of know all of them by the back of our heads and for these products we go out of our way to make sure that well your iPhone is going to be safe in them now for the remainder of this video we're going to delve deeper into the details with each case and work our way up from the bottom to the top I'll talk about the tough cases with the belt holsters first and then end it off with the cases well without so let's get started now out of all the tough cases that I've used that come with belt holsters the one product I'd actually stay away from is the Spec Presidio Ultra. The only pro for this product is that well, it has a modular design that was kind of cool I think on the drawing board and the cons is that well everything about it is just terrible. I'm annoyed that I've paid money for this. I will say this though I love Spec Presidio grip cases. I can't say the same for the Presidio Ultra. In fact, the Presidio Ultra is easily the worst case on this list. Why? Because despite having a modular design, which I like, swapping between the two cases, you know, the slim and the rugged, is a pain in the butt, and the buttons are just so bad. They're just so terrible. The final kick to the face is the fact that the belt holster actually isn't as sturdy as every other belt holster in this video. Most belt holsters have a lip on the inside of the clip that would catch your belt or part of your pants when you, you know, jump up and down, but the Presidio Ultra doesn't, which means any tiny bit of jumping results in your iPhone flying off your pants. The Presidio Ultra is a big, bulky, and very user unfriendly product. That's all I have to say about it. I'm still actually very annoyed at the fact that I paid money for the shoddy product. Now next up is the Pelican Shield. Now this case fits incredibly well. I do like how everything just fits so well together. The carbon fiber inset on the back is a little different. There's like real, actual, real metallic screws, which is kind of neat. The cons is that the buttons are a little tougher to use, the handling isn't great, and the drop height, uh, despite being a Pelican product, isn't actually stated clearly, we'll see. But every once in a while, I come across a case that I really personally like, but my scoring system actually destroys it. The Pelican Shield is one of those cases, as my favorite part of the case are actually the latches. Like the overall aesthetic and the design, I really enjoy about the Pelican Shield. The carbon fiber back and metallic screws add a level of sophistication to the case, and it just kind of makes it a little different, especially when compared to like the TPU King, you know, the Otterbox Defender. But the Pelican Shield does not handle well, the buttons aren't great, and the glossy finish on the carbon fiber back actually shows fingerprinting quite easily. The things that make the shield stand out don't make up for the short comings of the case which is why it gets such a mediocre score from a protection standpoint pelican does say that's three times military grade drop protection but doesn't state if that three times is drop height or three times the number of times you actually can drop it from normal drop height again i personally like the look of the product but i just really can't go to my way to recommend it unfortunately next up is the uh tech 21 evo max and the pros is that this is a very slim tough case it's got a protective camera cover which is a little different and the buttons on this case is just so awesome just so awesome now the cons well the bottom of the iphone's exposed a little bit more and the holster your iphone can easily just fall out now the tech 21 evo max the one I just tossed is actually one of the most expensive cases on this list. Not because the product itself was a very expensive, but because I had to pay a customs charge on top of it, which is kind of odd because I couldn't find this product in Canada. So I had to ship it, have it shipped from the UK, which is where Tech 21 is uh, located and Canadian customs dinged me for that. Yay. Anyways, the Evo Max is Tech 21's current tough case, but it seems to pale in size to something like the Patriot from, you know, the old days. Regardless, the Tech 21 Evo Max is a decent tough case, though I'd put it beneath all the other cases with holsters in terms of protection. The edges of the case is a little lower than average, so definitely get a screen protector to ensure you get the best protection for your iPhone. 
And the holster, despite being simpler to use, provides less protection when compared to something like the Griffin Survivor Extreme or the Autobox Defender. There isn't much friction between the holster and the case, so the case can actually slide out of the holster without much effort. It also doesn't cover the entire, you know, face of the device. Now, if you can overlook these shortcomings or are planning on holstering your iPhone from top to bottom, which seems odd to me, uh, then the Tech 21 Evo Max is maybe going to be an attractive choice. The buttons are just so easy to press and the lower than average case edges means that gesturing on your iPhone isn't going to be problematic or annoying, but those kind of defeat the purpose of a tough case. The most unique feature of the Evo Max is the camera lens cover. Now out of the dozens and dozens of iPhones I've dropped over the last five, six years, I've actually never broken a camera lens, which is kind of surprising given how much I've actually thrown iPhones around. So I'm really not sure how practical the camera lens cover is, but you know, now we have a product that actually has that. Now on to the second Pelican case in this video, which is the Pelican Voyager. The pros is that it's a decent handling case. It has a clear back, I guess. It does come with a screen protector and it actually works with other edge to edge screen protectors. So if you decide not to use the included one, the pros is that, well, it has a screen protector. Now, when I got the latest Pelican Voyager, I thought it was a new case. The clear back really threw me off as my last Voyager, well, had a lot of rubber on the back of the case. But that's the biggest difference between these two versions. Now, I do have two issues with the Voyager, the first being the fit of the mute switch cover. It looks way too sloppy for my liking. The original one had a bit of a sloppy design. This one just is just way too sloppy, in my opinion. The giant gap between the case and the cover is quite large, which means that dust and debris is going to accumulate in that area over time. And speaking of dust and debris, the included screen protector is going to be a screen destroyer. From my experience, screen protectors with no adhesive on them will trap dust and debris between the screen protector and the iPhone screen, which results in tiny scratches over time. Given that the best looking part of the newer iPhones is the screen, having something that might harm or scratch that feature, well, it's unacceptable to me, but maybe that's just me. Now there's a bit of reprieve as the design of the Voyager allows it to be compatible with most edge to edge screen protectors. Now, I'm a way bigger fan of Pelican's clear cases, but their tough lineup, well, it just doesn't do it for me anymore. Next up is the case that needs absolutely no introduction, the Autobox Defender. The pros is that this is a very well-known product. It's a known quantity, I'll say, and it handles generally very well. The cons is that it's, well, expensive, relatively, I guess, to other tough cases. It definitely is bulky, and it's basically a tank for your iPhone. The Autobox Defender is probably the stalwart champion of tough iPhone cases. I know people who have bought Defenders for every one of their iPhones and swear by them. And for good reason. Now, the Autobox Defender is not a small case, and the general rule of thumb is that, well, the more plastic you have in the product, the tougher it's gonna be. Now, before you stop watching this video, because you think you figured out which Autobox case to get, and you, you're thinking we're just getting the Defender again, consider this, you might be missing out on what I want to say about the Autobox Pursuit as well as the Defender Pro, which in my opinion are actually better than the regular Defender. Now, the best thing that Autobox did with this Defender was to remove the screen protector. If you've seen some of our earlier videos, you know how much we hate built-in screen protectors. In fact, I'll talk about that hate with the built-in screen protectors for, well, cases that have built-in screen protectors in this video. Now, the latest version of the Autobox Defender may not be as tough as older versions because it doesn't have a built-in screen protector, but really that's okay because you just have to go buy a glass one or a plastic one if you feel like you need that protection. And so we head to the Autobox Defender Pro. This product has all the benefits of a regular Defender and it has one extra one, a couple actually, with the antibacterial coating that's apparently infused with the TPU. This feature is very, very fancy, but I'll be honest with you, I have really no way of testing it. The cons is that, well, if you thought the Defender was expensive, this is $10 more, so... I wouldn't say it's cost prohibitive given that iPhone 10s are just stupidly expensive now, um, but still, you know, $60, $70 for a case? Not cheap, but it's a good choice if you decide to go with it. Now the Otterbox Defender Pro has all the benefits of, well, the screenless Defender. The TPU on the Defender Pro is a little thicker and has a little more texture, so it's going to handle a little better than the original Defender. The biggest difference is really the antibacterial shield that Autobox claims that this product has that, you know, keeps your cesspool of a smartphone relatively bug free. Now this feature sounds incredibly fluffy to us as we can't really test it, but if you work in an environment where clean hands is a necessity, spending the extra $10 on the Defender Pro might be a no brainer. 
if you assume it works. Now, if you're wondering how much punishment these defenders can take, check out my OtterBox case roundup I did a few months ago. There's a few drops that I thought my iPhone was actually done for. Now onto the toughest case in this list, and that's the Griffin Survivor Extreme. Well, the toughest case with a belt holster anyways. Now, why is it the toughest case, you might be wondering? Because it offers better than average dust protection. I know some of you might be surprised that I'm recommending this product, but the reality is that I've been recommending this product as a tough case for many, many years now. And actually only one or two of you actually guessed it right on Instagram. So, you know, kudos to you guys, but the rest of you, I'm sorry, I disappointed you. In fact, it's the only product on this list that makes your brilliant OLED screen kind of trip out on rainbows. But I'm guessing if you need the protection of a plastic screen protector with a case, you're kind of not terribly concerned with a bit of rainbowing. Now the standout feature of the Griffin Survivor Extreme is the dust protection. This is the only other case other than the White Case Pro, which is waterproof, that offers a measurable amount of dust protection at IP55, which means spraying your iPhone uh, in the Survivor Extreme from any direction with water will not have any harmful effects. Now the biggest downside from my perspective is that the buttons are a little tough to use and this is definitely going to make your iPhone feel very very wide. But that's almost expected given the size of this product. Now I'll be honest with you, I was a little surprised with this because the Griffin Survivor Extreme has been my go-to tough case with a holster since the iPhone 6s. Apparently I've bought a Survivor Extreme for every single iteration of the new iPhones anyways. And this one actually wasn't called the Survivor Extreme, it was called something else uh, back in the iPhone 6 days. But apparently I, I'm a big fan of it. And I actually didn't realize I had all these uh, Survivor Extremes until I went looking for my old Pelican cases. So. Now, I will say that the Griffin Survivor Extreme actually has gotten a little less tough over the years because there's cutouts now uh, at the top. So dust and debris, whatever I said about the Pelican case, is going to apply to the Griffin Survivor Extreme as well. So if you're finding this video helpful or useful, consider getting all your stuff through my Amazon links. This video is not sponsored, so it's taken a lot of time and effort uh, to compile everything. Now, none of the iPhones were sponsored. I just said that. Uh, so if you do, <laughs> if you feel like helping me out with my channel, consider getting your stuff through uh, my Amazon links that are found in the description section below or through my website. So let's keep going. So on to the non-belt holster tough cases. You know, if you don't need the belt holster, and since it is 2019 and not 2005, belt holsters aren't cool anymore. Um, <laughs> Never mind. Like most, like the previous section, I'm just going to start with the products I'd stay away with that I've used and then kind of work my way up to products that I'd recommend and then my go-to product, my daily driver. Now the one case out of this entire selection of cases everywhere, I've literally got cases everywhere. You can't see it in the video, but there are literally cases everywhere. Um, the one case I'd stay away from is the Gear 4 Platoon. It's a decent handling. The buttons are actually kind of nice, but this is a massive case. And I did have a minor build quality issue with this product. Again, the more plastic, the more protection. I say that a lot and that rings true for the Gear 4 Platoon. This is a fairly bulky case, but it does offer your iPhone with 20 feet of supposed drop protection. And 20 feet is a lot. But I'll add this, that the drop protection is probably for the corners because the last time we dropped a Gear 4 case, well, our screen broke and it was sad and expensive. And to come to think about it, we actually haven't reviewed a Gear 4 case since. It's been that scarring. Huh. The standout feature for me with the platoon is the fact that the buttons are incredibly to use despite being, you know, buried in plastic. I'm not sure if it's because in my mildly older age, I'm getting really annoyed with cases with tough buttons to use, but that's not the case for the Gear 4 platoon. The texture of the case is also quite nice, and the bumper design of the case is, well, a little different. Now, Gear 4 uses a product called D3O, uh, in their products, which is an impact absorbing polymer of sorts. It's probably one of the reasons why the platoon can take a supposed 20 foot drop, but I'm guessing that the gigantic size of the case doesn't hurt that feature either. Now, as a side note, Tech 21 used to use D3O in their products. Remember this case? This is one of the very first cases I reviewed for this channel. Also, do you remember when TPU used to yellow a lot? Yeah. This looks like a retainer. Blah. Next up is the OtterBox Pursuit. And basically for the rest of this video, every single case that I'm gonna talk about, including the Pursuit, is gonna be a case actually worth getting. They all kind of rate the same way, except for the very last one. The pros with the Pursuit is that the new design over the old Pursuit is awesome, and it offers better than average dust protection than your average tough case with no belt holster. 
Otterbox updated the pursuit for the 2019 iPhones and the updated pursuit is awesome. It's a tougher case uh, than your average slim case, I'll say. And it will offer your iPhone better drop protection than the average iPhone case. Now, again, it's not as tough as the Defender and that's mostly because of how it's designed. Uh, but the pursuit will offer better dust protection. And from my perspective on a day-to-day -day basis, that dust protection is probably more important than the tiny extra drop protection that you'll get uh, between, well, with the Defender. From a wear and tear perspective, the few TPU and polycarbonate won't last as long as the TPU shell of the Defender, so it will show dings and drops over time. This tiny crack on the Pursuits came from me trying to play basketball with this case. The old Pursuit snapped together along the center of the iPhone edge, which made it kind of weak actually. With the updated Pursuit, OtterBox went with an overlapping lip over the front panel, and this does a way better job of keeping your case together. Next up is the Cadillac Impact Protection. And this is gonna be the slimmest tough case in this video. The buttons are incredibly easy to use, though they look small, but they are very easy to use. And the mute uh, button toggle thing, this rotary switch is awesome. So if you use this a lot, do consider getting this case. Uh, the cons is that, well, because it's so thin, the case edges are kind of low, so it won't offer as much screen protection. If you need an alternative to my one of my favorite cases, the most limitless, check out the Catalyst Impact Protection. Now, the Catalyst Impact Protection doesn't offer as much screen protection as I just mentioned because of the lower edges, uh, but from a corner drop between the mouse and the Catalyst, the two are almost equal in my opinion. The biggest difference between the Catalyst and mouse case is the mute switch access. If being able to easily access that part of the iPhone is important to you, you're going love the rotary switch on the impact protection. Next up is the Moshi Talus, and I do really like this case as well. The pros is that it's a little fancier than the average tough case, handles well, and it offers above average dust protection. The case edges, despite being larger and tougher, might be too high for some people. Now, I'm a pretty big fan of Moshi as the products are generally a notch above in terms of build quality. The Talos is no different. It actually feels like a tough case in my opinion. It's hard to describe that, but it just feels tougher. It fits your iPhone incredibly well and the overall design ensures that your iPhone isn't going to fall out of your hand easily. Now the Talos is Moshi's toughest case with a supposed drop rating of 10 feet, though this isn't explicitly stated on their website, though I'm pretty comfortable dropping my own iPhone in the Talos without much hesitation. Much. Now from a tough case perspective, the standout feature is going to be the dust debris protection that the Talos offers. Unlike the Catalyst and Mouse products, the Talos has a mesh over the speaker grills, a port cover, and a mute switch cover that actually is one of the best mute case switches I've ever used. Which is weird because I've used a lot. Now the big downside is that this product, the Moshi Talos, doesn't come with a belt holster. But again, if you don't need the belt holster, then this is a pretty tough case worth getting. Now before I talk about my personal favorite non-belt holster tough case, I'm gonna talk about the Hit Case Pro. This is the only case that's fully waterproof on this list, and you might be thinking that seems weird to have that product in this list, but it's made from aluminum, so there's no way it's bending. And the updated Hit Case Pro, unlike the previous ones, aren't tanks. This, in my opinion, offers the ultimate protection for iPhones. You just can't really do much to your iPhone in this in this case. And if you want to do more, like mount it to your chest and strap a camera lens to it, then yeah, you could do that with this product as well. The cons is that. There's a lot of stuff to it, so it might get caught on things. It's a little bulky. And the iPhone functionality, like the screen, uh, might take a tiny, tiny hit. It used to take a big hit, now it just takes a tiny hit. Now the last case I'll talk about is the Mouse Limitless, as well as the Mouse Clarity. I know my fondness for the Mouse Limitless is not a secret. We like the case a lot because it's useful and it's tough. And it's actually one of the very few cases we'd feel comfortable treating our iPhones like a toddler's play toy. So if you just want to see me drop it over 40 times, just go watch the full Mouse Limitless version 2 review. Oh, and the one thing that sets Mouse's cases apart is that their cases come with screen protectors. And it's not like a crappy non-sticky one like all the other ones, like the Griffin Survivor Extreme and the Pelican ones. This, this one has an adhesive to it, and it could take a beating. So that's all I got. If any questions, comments, leave them down there. If this video again was helpful to you, get all your stuff through my Amazon links. Won't cost you any extra. And I just get a tiny bit of a commission so that I could just keep doing this, making really unbiased reviews. I'm not bought by anybody, so I could basically say anything I want, which is fun. Don't get the gear for platoon. First time watching one of my videos, do encourage you to click subscribe. That's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching. Oh God, now we're done. 24 minutes of video. 
Oh god, this thing showed up. Mm -hmm.